All right, so we're ready to put this in. So we're going to, again, use any excess we have over here on the threads just to make it easier to get off next time. And it'll do a little bit of heat transfer, so. This is where the heat gets transferred to the nozzle. That's <laughs> actually, actually, oh, actually, not, actually, actually how it actually happens, so. We're going to make sure we want to seat this heat break tube really well. So we don't have any gaps at the bottom. That was our problem, part of our problem last time. So that goes in here. Again, this is all cooled down. We're not going to ever work on this when it's hot anymore. And we're going to seat this by hand. That way you can get it thread started easily. Doing it by hand. Let's do it finger tight. Then we need to heat this up now, and we're going to uh, uh, finish it up with our millimeter socket when it's uh, when it's um, hot then it'll really stay in there we could tighten it up now but it's not going to fully tighten so I noticed this before the socket doesn't really go on very well unless it's hot so I'll just tighten a little bit with the socket but so we need to heat this up so it looks all brand new uh, the other thing we can check out now is we can try putting this uh, silicone sock on Let's see what that looks like there that looks neat see Compared to this, this is what we had before. Now we got this nice new looking silicone sock, and these are pretty cheap, so I, you get three at once. And um, eventually it'll get all gunky, probably, like this. But we'll be able to replace these and keep our printing area nice and clean and no drippy, globby filament hanging around to mess up our print. So, all right, so heat this up. Take this off first, obviously. Heat this up, put it on the tray, heat it up, and then we'll uh, uh, tighten it up for fi to finish. Then we'll let it cool down, and then we'll go ahead and put it all, put the printer all back. Ah, uh, before I heat it up, I got to make sure I reconnect the uh, thermocouple. That would be a good idea. Otherwise, it's not going to know how it's heating up. So, all right, so that's reconnected. So the heat. The wires that go to the heating rod are connected. I never disconnected those. And the wires going to the thermocouple, which is screwed into the heating block, they're all <clears throat> they're all together. They're all uh, hooked up, so now it'll know how hot it is. Okay, it's nicely heated up. And I wanted to point out that this metal tray works really well for doing this operation, because I can put my finger right here and it's not hot at all. So this uh, steel uh, baking tray, which used to be made for making cookies or whatever, does a good job of dissipating the heat. So, you know, a few inches away from this 240 degrees C print head is, and also, of course, the cooling block is in between, too. I didn't think about that. So it's up in the air. The cooling block is actually on here. So that's another reason why it's cooler. But this, this is a good solution, so you don't have to take everything out. <clears throat> actually, you can't take everything out because you have to have it plugged in. So this is the safest way to do it. Let's just put it All right, so now we're going to... Tighten up our uh, our uh, nozzle. So we'll use our uh, pressing wrench, and we're going to use our socket. Tighten this up. There. But the, you don't want to over tighten, it, obviously. You just want to make it so it's not going to go anywhere when it heats up. All right. So now we're done with that. Now we're going to turn it off. Uh, turn off the uh, heating actually, and then we'll let it cool down, and we'll be able to put it back together. So I have it on preheat. I'm just going to push stop, and then uh, but so you don't have to guess. You can go over to tools here and to click status, and it'll tell you how hot the extruder is. So it's 232 now. So when it gets down to room temperature, which is I guess about 24 degrees C. So but let's let it cool all the way down. No reason to be in a hurry. Let's take it take it one step at a time. We're not going to do this very often, hopefully. And we'll just go from there. I might I might put my little portable fan on it. That'll speed it up a little bit. I'll put my portable fan on it. That'll speed up the process slightly. You know. Save a few minutes anyway. It's the, the, the extruder cools off pretty quickly, but it's the platform that if you heat it up, it takes a long time to cool down. So. Yeah, so I got my little fan here cooling it off. And it's going down pretty fast. It's only down to one. 180. So let's take a few more minutes, then we'll come back and we'll reassemble it and give it a test.
All right, it's all cooled down, so we can handle it. And we got a little residual boron nitride over here. I'm not gonna worry about that. So we can put our sock on, go like this. It's labeled MK10, this is an MK10 sized uh, printhead. And so we went from this printhead, this, this printer is about, I guess it's almost a year old now. Went from this printer, printhead, to this nice brand, brand new shiny one. Also this insulation to this new silicone insulation, which I think I actually do better than this, I'm guessing. We'll see. Main thing is that this sock has to hold on, has to stay on here and not fall off while it, when it gets hot. Otherwise that'll make a mess on its own. So, so we'll be checking that out. We're gonna do a test print. Uh, one of the things that failed right before we started all this mess. And we'll just see how that goes. And we'll uh, start printing again. Uh, I've shown this before, I figured I'd just show it again. So I, I put together the motor and the uh, cooling stack here by screwing these screws in. So that this goes through the cooling block. So that makes it a unit up here that you can install the machine. So if you look over here, there's two screws you have to put in. This one over here. There's one hidden down in this little slot, this little uh, depression here. It's covered up by this bracket. So you don't want to you don't want to loosen up this one. This is what holds it on to. This is what holds the uh, side cooler on. So then you take your little nozzle. This directs the air. See that little channel there? It directs the air from the cooling unit on the side here. At a 45 degree angle. And that goes, blows it right across the print head. So you get your third screw. These are all with a 3 millimeter Allen wrench. So you, this is your third screw. So there's three screws to remove. First you, when you take it out, you can move this screw. And that hidden screw and then the screw over here. Put it back on. This one's easiest to put back on because you can get at it better. Then the hidden screw and then this finally this uh, uh, plenum. I think that's the accurate name for it. That directs air from the cooling fan on the side. Directs it over the print nozzles. All right, so we're all in there to go. We got our nice clean silicone. Uh, Sleeve on there and we'll just see how it prints. Uh, when you're putting the print head back in the machine after you take it apart, it's better to lay it on its back. That's the reason I found that. Then it doesn't go anywhere and you can work. You can work from the side here. If you're trying to work from underneath, or if it's on its legs, you have to work from underneath. That's kind of tricky. This is this it won't go anywhere because it's up against the back uh, stop. So this is a good way to, to uh, Work on it when you need to take this up, take this apart. So, and of course, you also remember to unplug it. So, if you put it on its back, you're likely to remember to unplug it. So, that's a good, that's a good, good plan. All right, now we're ready to try. All right, remember back in part one, we were printing these uh, Star Wars uh, Imperial credits for the, or my uh, Etsy store, and we were having some problems with extrusion. So, that's where we started. Now, one of these on this print got messed up. I need to print another one of this size. This is the Star Wars symbol for money. It's like the dollar sign of Star Wars. And then all these little bumps here uh, say something about the denomination of this credit. So we're gonna print, we're gonna do a, a test print of one of these and we'll see how it turns out. If that works, then we'll go on to back to production. All right, we're loading the filament. It's coming out smoothly. Yeah, let's let it go for a minute. This is a brand new nozzle. And so you stop. The way this filament retracts a little bit after you stop. So, so that's a nice, smooth, thick uh, extrusion. So now we'll go ahead. We already leveled it. Now we'll go ahead and start our print. All right, so laying down the white bead. Nice clean white bead, and now it's doing the outline. So the first part of the outline usually is a little bit uh, spotty, but then it cleans it up on the other side. So. so that looks nice and clean. It's going to start doing the diagonals. So. All right, we'll come back when it's almost done. Just about done.
pretty warm here in the garage now. It's up to 79. So we're printing with the top off. We keep the door closed because it keeps it running smoother, I think. Plus, uh, I think the cooling looks better as far as air flow. I'm not sure that's true, but that's what I've been doing. Just about perfect. Let's see how easy it comes. Let's see how easy it comes off the bed. That's a big, big deal. Looks like we had the bed temperature good. So the bottom is clean and top looks perfect. Here's one of the ones we did before before we started having problems. Nice and shiny, ready to go onto the onto my uh, Etsy store. So see. Look for a link in, in the description for a link to my Etsy store. You can buy these Star Wars credits. So that was a successful repair and refurbishment of our printer. So looking good for the future. So let's take a quick look at the, uh, at the uh, silicone. Let me get this blob out here. Let that silicone uh, sleeve it looks looks it stayed on there really well and looks fine so I think that's going to be a good addition it'll help keep it clean because that uh, Kapton tape would get all gummed up with all sorts of stuff so. all right looking good if you like this video please give it a thumbs up post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond that's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.